الحمد لله الحمد لله يستعينه واستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعه من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعصهما فانه لا يضر الا نفسه ولا يضر الله شيئا Indeed all praise due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we praise him we thank him we thank him for all the blessings that he has bestowed upon us those that we acknowledge and realize and those that we don't and those as well that we take for granted and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins give us the tawfiq to do tauba sincerely and to cleanse our hearts from the evils of our own souls dear brothers and sisters قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن المجيد بعد عوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تبارك الذي بيده الملك وهو على كل شيء قدير الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا وهو العزيز الغفور dear brothers and sisters this is these are a couple of verses from Surah Al-Mulk that I just recited. This is a surah that the Prophet ﷺ told us that he wished that everyone had preserved this in their hearts and that everybody would recite this at night as a way of expiating themselves from the from the torment of of the grave this is a only a surah with only 30 ayat if we make an effort i'm sure we can and all memorize one ayah a day one verse a day over a period of a month if you haven't already done so inshallah brothers and sisters this Ayah is like so many ayat, if not the whole of Quran, is so critical for our times. But this ayah in particular, it is a reminder for so many of us, if not not just Muslims, but everyone around us. A reminder about death, a reminder of death. Because we see so much of it happening around us, in our communities, and around the world. And I wanted to reflect on two recent events. But before I get into that, let me just simply mention what do these ayat say? Tabaraka Ladi. Blessed is he who in whose hands is this dominion. Blessed is the one in whose control is this world. Who is or who is ever ever powerful omnipotent omnipotent a person uh, one the one who knows what is going on and why it is going, happening to people around the world he has everything under control despite all the chaos that we see around us who ala kulli shay'in qadir that he is the one who has competency and control over everything alladhi khalaq al mawta wal hayat very interesting. He is the one who created death and life. Normally we talk about life first and then death. Any passage you look at, even in the Quran and otherwise, when we talk about life and death, we talk about life and death. Life comes first and death comes next. That is second. One of the reasons that scholars talk about is the fact that we were dead before we came to life. Who created us from nothing? It is God Himself who created us from nothing. We were nobodies and nothing, but God gave us life. But the other reason is to simply highlight that what your real aim and goal should be in life 
is to prepare for that next life. It's prepare for, for the death, for that day. For that day when you're going to be held accountable for every little thing and every big thing you did. So he has created death and life for what? He has done this so that he can see who is best in deeds. Who has لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ He can test you. He can test you and your character and your life. Everything you do. أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا He wants to see who is the best in their character, in action, in their deeds. This is what life is all about. I wanted to reflect upon two recent events to really hopefully hit this point home. If you grew up in 80s and 90s, in particular 90s, late 90s, you would know a, a man, if you happen to be especially from Southeast a South Asia, Indian subcontinent, in particular from Pakistan, you would know about this man, a great man who just passed away a week and a half, about two weeks ago, and he was just buried yesterday by the name of Junaid Jamshed. Incredible human being. You don't have to know, you don't have to understand his incredibly powerful songs in Urdu to, uh, to, to appreciate what he was and where he came from. A man who was the pop star of that culture at the time, who put the music of that country, of his country on the map in Pakistan, from Pakistan, whose music was declared among his one of his songs, national songs became among, were, were among the top 10 songs of the century by BBC. Top 10 songs of the century around the world. And what is interesting is, among all the top 10 singer, uh, songs that were chosen, all of those singers and artists had passed away by the time they were honored, their songs were honored. He was the only one alive and he was the prime time of his career as a musician, as an artist. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put some iman and faith in his heart and his life changed overnight. He gave up million dollar or rupees or whatever worth contracts from Pepsi, from all those big names, you can, corporations you can think of. He literally threw them down the drain. And he became penniless. He had hardly any cash in his pocket and people had seen him on streets. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him name and fame again, more so than he had before. And he himself told us many times that I had more fame and more money and per perhaps and definitely more fans today than I ever had before. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him all of that and more. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam has told us, the ones who are great, who are the best in jahiliyyah, like Umar bin al-Khattab, Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala anhu for instance, the best in jahiliyyah, the greatest of the greatest in jahiliyyah, in character as well as in actions, as well as in whatever talent and skills they had, they are also the best in in Islam and in Deen, once they convert, once they've transformed their lives sincerely. And, but what is interesting is the hadith says, إِذَا فَقُهُ That only in when that person really understands, truly believes, truly understands what he's doing and why he's doing, truly understands this Deen. This is when transformation really, really comes. SubhanAllah. And we know that he recently passed away at a young age, relatively young age, in 50s, low 50s, at a, in a plane crash, crash in Pakistan. All of that is significant because this man knew that his audience were not just the people that he knew at the time. He was thinking big and his songs were going beyond his language. He was singing in Arabic already. He was singing in English. He was singing Nasheed in other languages, in Bangla and Pashto and other languages. And his message was very, very specific and very powerful. 
It was always about spirituality. You don't have to agree with his ideolo ideological background. You don't have to agree with his religious and social commentary to appreciate what he has done for not just thousands of people, but millions of people. He came several times to, to Canada and inspired millions of people around him. But yet, despite all of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took, took his life away so suddenly. And it is a time for me, you and I to think about our own death, our own actions. What will be my last post on Facebook? What will be my last selfie? What will be my last twist Twitter message? Because when he passed away, you may have seen this already on social media, which went viral. His last Twitter message was him standing minutes before taking off and talking about he was standing on, on heaven on earth in Chitral and he says, I'm on a mission for Dawah. This is his last legacy that he left for all us, us to think about. What will be my last action? Because the Prophet ﷺ has told us that he will, we will be raised on khawatim, on our last of actions. Last of the actions. Just imagine thinking, think about sinning, God forbid. And God Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes our life away at that point. Think about that for a moment. And second set of events, which are also heavy in the minds of everybody on the, in the, around the world perhaps, but for sure for so many Muslims, is what's happening right now in Aleppo. In Sham, the blessed land of, you know, the blessed land that we know of. We see literally a, a wave of genocide happening and yet, yet the world is silent including you and I the world is silent watching the same thing happen that happened in Bosnia same thing happened that, ha that happened in Uganda we turn our faces away thinking it's just another war it's just another bloodshed big deal hundreds die thousands die every day big deal Subhanallah, very, very painful. Think about the last message that young girl, that young boy is recording, that we are waiting to die. Think about that for a moment. What will be my last message? Waiting, waiting to be killed by my own parents because I don't want to be killed and humiliated by the soldiers or by any, any evil people around me. Brothers and sisters, it's not about which side you're on. It's about humanity. Where is our humanity today? Where is my pain for the ummah today? For the oppressed, mustad'afeen that Quran talks about, which has no qualification. Believers, non-believers. We stand up for everybody, anybody and everybody who suffers. What are some excuses that we are giving today to ourselves? and fooling ourselves that we do not want to take action. Some of the excuses include, well, I don't, want, I don't know anything about the politics in Syria, it's too complicated. Oh, I don't know anything about what's going on in Burma, it's too complicated. Hence, I want to be as safe as possible, don't get involved. Or, it's not in my hands, it's in the hands of all these evil rulers or, or terrorists or you know, dictators and whatnot. All of these excuses we can use to really essentially you know, convince ourselves you know, we have done our part, if at all. What are, we can, and then other excuses of course being, my actions don't matter. I'm just a little kid or I'm just a one individual sitting here in Mississauga or Oakville or Toronto. Who cares? And other excuses we tell ourselves, and we need to be frank about it ourselves, it's just simply not happening to me. Or it's not my people. Or it's just not happening in Canada. Alhamdulillah, I'm safe. All of these excuses are things that are very, very problematic, very evil. And then I've also heard excuses, and I understand there's room for it. Things like, well, 
all of these things we can talk about, it's not going to help. These are all self-serving because not going to help kids or people, innocent people in Aleppo right now or in Burma. Nothing is going to happen overnight. So there's not much I can do about it. These are, there, these are, you know, I understand there, there are some valid reasons behind some of these things. There's some truth behind some of these things. But the point is, what really matters, brothers and sisters, is what will you answer? What will be your excuse on the day of judgment in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What have you done? What have I done, whatever little it could be, to save a life, to save lives of millions of people who are suffering around the world? Again, Muslims or non-Muslims. What have we done even for people who are oppressed in our own neighborhoods? Black Lives Matter or stand, standing, uh, stand with standing rocks. What have we done for people who are oppressed in our own backyards? This is something I leave you to think about for a moment. And I'll share a few thoughts and a few action items, inshallah, for me to start first acting upon them and for all of us as a reminder. Astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Wa li sa'il al-Muslimin. Fa astaghfiruhu innahu al-Ghafur Raheem. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulihi al-Kareem wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Dear brothers and sisters, my young brothers, my friends, everybody. There are three things that all of us should be doing proactively and even as a, as a reaction on an ongoing basis, regardless of the tragedy. And in this case of Aleppo, it is really a moral responsibility, a wake-up call for all of us to at least think about taking some of these actions. There are three major areas that you can help and I'm sure even if you have very little time and very little money, you can all do it. Number one, the area of advocacy, the area of lobbying. It is perhaps the most important thing and the most urgent thing we can do today. This is something that we sadly have as a community, have nothing to offer. We are very, very far behind. Our friends and our neighbors in other communities have done an incredible job. They have done much more lobbying at times for us and our causes and Muslim issues than we have at times. They are the ones standing at times in rallies and protesting for us while we are nowhere to be found. We need to ask ourselves what it is that we can do to lobby and put pressures on governments around the world. And don't say to yourself, it doesn't work. It has worked in the past. It requires a lot of work, a lot of persistence, a lot of effort. This is our real struggle today. In the case of Burma itself, this is the only thing that works today. That is whatever little you know, uh, relief people in Burma are getting at times is not through the food we are sending because they're not getting anything. It's through the government pressures so that we can stop genocide in those places. This works and has to work. And if we are the ones who have to champion these causes, as Muslims, as citizens, as people who are people of peace and justice around the world, global pe Muslims and global citizens, and people who feel for the Ummah. Number one is raising awareness, awareness, educating people around us, both Muslims and our neighbors. Educate people what the, the reality on the ground is and go beyond the media headlines, educating them, educating everybody around us. Use social media as much as possible to spread the word because that's how the word goes the fastest. And already, alhamdulillah, a lot of it is happening already. A lot of that raw footage is coming out of Aleppo, for instance. People are seeing what's going on live at times to people, innocent people in front of their eyes. We need to do a lot more of that, more strategically and smartly. And use a hashtag, for instance, stand with Aleppo, or hashtag Aleppo, for instance, to you know, amplify your posting so that a lot more people get to see it through Twitter, Facebook, and other places. So that's number one. Educate your co-workers, everybody around you, communities around you. Number two is to sign a petition. And in more, for most causes out there, there are petitions out there 
online petitions that do help and put a pressure on the government. In this case, there's a petition E-609. E-609. You can search for it online. E-609. This is a, a petition that the government, uh, that people have put together to put pressure on the government to start doing, making statements at least. Start doing something practical and something specific to alleviate the tragedy that is unfolding and the genocide that's unfolding right before our eyes. So this is number two under lobbying. And another thing is call your MP. What, how long does it take to call your MP? How many of us even know who our MP is? Think about that. If you don't know, there's a problem, brothers and sisters. We need to engage our government officials on issues that matter. And this is your responsibility and my responsibility. You can find that on Google easily. Find who is your MP. Simply give them a call. I want to know what have you done in the parliament. I want to know what have you done to raise awareness and do something very pretty particular and practical and specific about ending genocide. What has your government done? This is the least you and I can do. And, and believe it or not, these things work. Protest is another thing. Protest. The problem is people are a lot of times cynical, say this doesn't work and that doesn't work. The, the reality is, it's not just one thing that works. It is a whole bunch of things that, that are brewing. The, the, when masses come together and start you know, voicing issues. They're calling their MPs. They're, they're using social media to make noise. And they are, they are, you know, protesting in front of government buildings or in front of media. That is what works. That's how Black Lives Matter got all their attention. That's how Standing Rock got all, and the native people got the attention that they deserve. And much more that they still deserve and they need. This is the least we can do is to go out and peacefully, in a civil manner, protest and show uh, you know, our, our concern that we care. This is the least we can do. And you don't need special permits for protests. You can go any public space, not private space, any public space and you can make, you can make a point. Do that this weekend if you can. Do your part, whatever you can. You can also look it up on social media and Google. There are lots of protests across the world happening. There are some that have already happened in Toronto. You can look up yourself and see hopefully that would be of some use to you, inshallah. Something that would be more suitable for your time and schedule. So that is number one, lobbying. Lobbying, advocacy. Number two is relief. Another excuse not to give is that, well, we don't know if the relief is going there or not. Well, we do know in many cases that there are specific government NGOs or international NGOs that are working on the ground. Not everybody has access. There are a couple of Islamic, uh, you know, Muslim relief organizations that are directly on the ground. There are these white helmet people right now in Aleppo, which a lot of people uh, have issues with because they say that they have biases and they're working with certain group or that, all that kind of stuff. But the reality is they have saved 73,000 people, innocent people. You can say whatever you want and you don't have to agree with their biases or whatever. We need people right now to save lives on the ground. So whatever you do your research, don't take my word. I don't know myself who is right, who's wrong. This is not the point. Point is do your research and give to, you know, uh, doctors Without Borders, give to relief organization that you know is on the ground that is actually serving, that is saving lives. Do your part, inshallah. And, and also part of that is support our local Syrian brothers and sisters, especially those who have come as refugees, our new families, our, our new neighbors today. Because not only have they ran away you know, from that trauma, now they have to relive it as they see images, sometimes their own family members being killed in back, in, uh, back home in Aleppo or in Syria. So reach out to these people. Show some concern and have mercy on people around you. Have, some, have a heart for people who are from that part of the world who are seeing this because they saw this already before and seeing this again and again and again. And the last point, point is prayer, dua. The last point is dua. Never ever, brothers and sisters, underestimate the power of dua. You do not know and I do not know whose dua Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept. In the middle of the night, early in the morning, whose prayer Allah will accept. Because it's part of Allah's plan. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took away the life of Junaid Jamshid at a young age, at a prime of his career. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, so, uh, has, has shown what is going on around the world in Burma, in, in, um, in Aleppo for instance right now, so that at least you and I could wake up. At least you and I start thinking about لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلَهُ as this, the, 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 the verses from Surah al that I recited, whose actions are the best and whose actions are, are going to be, last actions are, are going to be the best. Who will die in what state? As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has told us about. So brothers and sisters, never, never think about that your dua is not, is, is not going to do anything. Never once think that. Make, pour your heart out and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can do and has done miracles in the past. We have seen it and we know the power of dua. And the last point when it comes to dua is part of that is brothers and sisters. And this is the last point that I wanted to share and leave with is tawbah. It is time for us to do personal tawbah and global tawbah as many scholars talk about. It is time for us to ask ourselves what are those sins that I keep doing, keep committing, the, when the world is not watching, when nobody's watching, when the room is dark, when I have access to everything online that I can watch and see and enjoy. Ask yourself, what are those three, two or three sins that I'm continuously doing and disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with? No matter how young you are or how old you may be, it is time for us to do tawbah. It's time for us to come clean with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only then, we will, will we be able to feel the, the pain for the ummah. Only then we can expect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to relieve the pain and suffering of people around us. This is a time for purification. It's a time for tawbah and deep self-reflection. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me and all of us the tawfiq to come clean with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To give us pain in our heart for people who are suffering around the world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to learn lessons from the legacy of great people who have passed away this year, including Muhammad Ali, including Junaid Jamshid, including Abdul Sattar Idi, and all these great people whom Allah has taken away just this year alone. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala relieve the pain and suffering of people in Aleppo, in Burma, in, in every place that people are suffering, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them relief as quickly as possible. Allahumma dina fi man hadayt wa aafina fi man aafayt wa tawallana fi man tawallayt. Allahumma innak aafuwan kareemun tuhibbul aafa fa'afu anna. Ya muqallib al-qulub, thabbit quluban ala deenik. Ya musarrif al-qulub, sarrif quluban ala ta'atik. Allahumma ihdina sirat al-mustaqeen. Allahumma سهل لنا صراط المستقيم اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة الفردوس ونعوذ بك من النار يا ناصر المستضعفين انصر إخواننا وأخواتنا وأطفالنا وضعفائنا في كل مكان اللهم ارحمهم اللهم اغفر لهم اللهم ثبت قدامهم اللهم يسر لهم أمورهم اللهم سلمهم اللهم احفظهم ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وقم الصلاة